Hi, good morning, and welcome to day three of this five-day series about the essentials of reading music. Today, we're going to talk about rhythm and meter. Uh, it's almost impossible to separate the two, and the most important thing that I want you to take away from this session today is to understand how and why rhythm is, why music is divided into measures. Uh, measures are, are a very important way that we organize the rhythm of a piece. Um, I want to also quickly go over the names and values of different notes, and then also to be able to recognize visual cues that make reading rhythms easier. I talked a little bit about this on day one, and I'll talk a little bit more about it today. Um, it is, even for someone like me, uh, who uh, reads a lot of music and is well aware of exactly uh, how rhythms, the math of rhythms, uh, oftentimes just being able to spot the visual, um, to, to sing or to play how a rhythm looks, um, it works just fine, <laughs> uh, especially for what we're aiming for out of this. Uh, so let's start, and I am going to use a ridiculous analogy today of a pizza. <laughs> so here is our pizza, and the I promise this will make sense. Um, a whole note um, is in general, the largest note that we'll sometimes deal with uh, in, in most music. And it obviously is represented by the whole pizza. Uh, however, if I wanted to share that pizza with someone, if I was feeling very generous and I split that pizza in half, uh, we would then have two halves of a pizza or two half notes. Okay, and that continues the same way uh, down here. If we divide it amongst four people, we each get a quarter or a quarter note. And then if I divide it one step further into eight slices, we each end up with an eighth or an eighth note. Uh, the reason that I did this ridiculous thing uh, was not to make you feel childish, <laughs> but uh, to say that it really is as simple as that, thinking of a whole, a half, a quarter and an eighth. That's really it. Now, notice how I didn't quite talk about how long to hold those because that changes depending on the type of music that we're looking at. Speaking of which, let's move along to a piece of music and take a look at this. All right, here we are. And all of a sudden, we start to have, let me switch to red so it's easier to see, uh, we have these measure lines that are dividing our music up into measures, bar lines into measures, sorry. <laughs> and you can see, I picked this hymn specifically for a couple of reasons. The first is that it's very easy to see. Here are our quarter notes that are filled in, and we have one, two, three, four. It's very easy to see that that is how we're going to think about this music, is in four quarter notes. Holy, 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 e is how we're going to think about this most of the way. Now, let's take a look at what I just uh, chanted, uh, which was when we get to the second measure here, we have only two notes. And what do we have? We have two halves. So instead of four quarters, we have two halves. Over here in the very last measure, we have the same thing. We've got two halves that make up our pizza, our measure of pizza. Um, in between that, uh, we have something interesting that happens in this third measure here, right in the middle. We have this little dotted line here, and that dotted line means something. I'm sure you already knew that. <laughs> uh, what it means is that this could be sung one of two ways, and take a look at the, at the words below this. For three of the verses, uh, no, sorry, two of the verses, uh, we just sing one word 
in that amount of time. And so in that case, we make this a half note and we go half, quarter, quarter, or two, three, four. Um, and so in this case, if we sing Lord God Almighty, did you hear how that was long, short, short, long, long? However, in the next verse, instead we sing the words, all the saints adore thee. And in that case, then we ignore this dotted line, which is why it's dotted. And instead, we end up singing four straight quarter notes. So we have all the saints adore thee. That stays the same. So anytime you see those dotted lines, um, don't get too confused by them. It's really just to help you out, to let you know uh, that, hey, sometimes uh, you might sing this in the space of two notes, or sometimes you might sing two words. And so that's really all that that means. Um, so that's another reason that I picked this piece as well, too. I liked the, the option to be able to explain the, the, um, those dotted ties that tie two notes together. Um, now, Let's take a look at, and let me see how much of this I can get rid of here. Uh, let's uh, take a look at a couple more things. Um, we have right down here at the beginning of this second line, um, we have a type of note that I didn't talk about. Um, it's got a dot next to it. And we also kind of don't really see the right amount of notes unless we know what that dot means. We're a little confused. But let's take a look at the alto line right down here. The alto line keeps us steady because we have, and actually the tenor and basses do as well too, it's really just the sopranos that are causing trouble, but we let the sopranos cause trouble whenever they want to. Um, so the altos down here have four straight quarter notes, as do the tenors and the basses. And so that is just like the rest of the piece has been. However, the sopranos do a rhythm that's slightly different. Instead of going early in the morning, they go early in the morning. And so that actually makes this dotted quarter note worth one and a half beats. Don't pull out your calculator, we're gonna be okay. This is a half beat right here. So that makes two beats and then we've got three and four over there. Um, so that what that dot does, anytime we see a dot by the side of a note in music, we have, and this is gonna be one more math thing, we add half of the value to the note itself. Let me, let me explain that using numbers. So our quarter note, we've been counting as one beat, okay? Now, we haven't been using numbers a ton. We've been mostly going by feel, but this is one beat, okay? Now, half of one is a half. <laughs> so if we add that to it, we end up with one and a half. It's almost, if I can go back to my silly pizza analogy, it's almost as if I wanted to eat three pieces of pizza <laughs> and save the rest for everyone else. Um, we have a quarter note's worth of pizza, but uh, we don't really have anything for three. Um, and so that's where that dot comes into play, is it adds a little bit extra to the note, um, but not so much that it becomes worth two beats. It's just a way to notate something that fits in the middle. So we see that we have that dotted quarter note that is worth a beat and a half. And also notice how it sits in between the different notes that the alto sings. So the alto is very, um, in, in both how it sings and how it looks, is very steady. We have four notes that are almost evenly divided in the music. However, that eighth note kind of sits in between to let us know that even if we're not too sure what the exact rhythm should be, 
it certainly looks like it should go early in the morning. So remember to think about that. Think about performing the rhythm, how it looks. And then over at the end of the line here, we have a whole note that gets the entire pizza. Now to continue with this ridiculous analogy, sometimes we end up with a pizza that, uh, you know, maybe it's a personal size pizza and it's only cut into six slices because it's small and cutting it into eight wouldn't really work well. Well, then all of a sudden we have to change how we count things, okay? And I want you to imagine that all of a sudden our pizza being, that was not what I expected, but that's okay, that works. <laughs> <laughs> uh, our pizza is divided into two halves here, but each only get three slices or three beats or three macro beats as, or, or uh, micro beats as we would call them or small little parts of the measure. It's three plus three. We're no longer dealing with uh, four on each side. And this is why sometimes I, I like to talk about rhythm in terms of meter, because now we're going to count this differently. Um, we're not going to really use quarter notes here. We're going to think about eighth notes. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. We've got six eighth notes, and they're going to be divided differently. Um, let me let me show you a piece of music and I will tell you that as I was going through um, the hymnal today trying to look for an example I struggled to find one uh, that would make that personal size pizza make sense all a, a ton of the music within the hymnal is divided just by quarter notes where quarter notes are sort of where you feel the beat um, however, once I found one and I realized what hymn it was, I knew I absolutely wanted to talk about this. So here we have, take a look right from the beginning, we've got lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. So unlike our last song where we had one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, here we have one, two, three, one, two, one, one, two, three, one. So our beats are divided into threes instead of twos. And so here, um, we have our dotted quarter notes. Do you remember when I said that it was like three slices of pizza? Well, here's our three slices of pizza dotted quarter notes right here. And sometimes those three slices of pizza get divided into three individual slices for three people who don't have my appetite. And so, so that right there um, is, I think, an interesting way of, of, of looking at this. Um, so we have in this song right here, we have sort of six slices of pizza and sometimes they're divided three and three. Uh, sometimes they're divided into three and then three ones. Um, but it works exactly the same way. Um, and also, I wanted to show you with this song before we left, um, is take a look at this right here. Now we have this tie, but it's not dotted. And it lets us know that we definitely need to follow this every single time. And it functions the same way. It's almost like a plus sign. So here we have three beats, one, two, three. We've got our quarter note that's worth two. I made a liar out of myself. I said we weren't really gonna deal with quarter notes, but apparently we do. <laughs> and then the eighth note is one. We'll take a look at what we end up with. Three, five, six. We end up with six beats in our measure. It's just that we hold it, 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 berti. So again, uh, this looks like we should hold it for longer, just as up here at the top, 
it looks like we need to hold those for longer and then these are a shorter bit. Now I will say uh, one last thing before I go. Um, my attempt to make these videos short gets foiled every single day. Um, that the hymnal doesn't do a great job of spreading notes out proportionally. Oftentimes it's, it's guided by needing to make sure the words can be read. So sometimes you might not see the exact amount of space um, that, that you would need in order to just visually read the notes. Um, and so that's why it's important to have a good understanding, but then also to know why they're not spaced correctly. And it's because of the words, so that this way you can still see that here are three eighth notes, and then we've got dotted quarters that take up half of the measure apiece. And so knowing how the music is divided, knowing that it sometimes might not be spaced exactly right in terms of time, but more in terms of words, and then knowing um, how to, to count it and more importantly how to feel it um, is going to be uh, the, the only thing that you need in order to feel successful. Um, I hope I covered enough today. I tried to cover this in a strange way um, that didn't get um, too bogged down with, um, with, with how to count things but more how to feel it. Um, so I hope that that resonates with you and um, thanks so much for checking in today and um, I will hope to see you tomorrow when we talk a little bit more about uh, music that has more than one thing going at once, just like this piece we looked at today. All right, thank you so much, and I will see you tomorrow.